What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at another fancy, super special one from Shira Goroff. This is the F95T Custom Division Knife, uh, which you have seen on the channel likely for the last few months. Um, and this is one of the knives that I uh, said to myself that I would never move. And uh, it's been my favorite knife for a very long time. And number two, this guy, number two from Shira Goroff. Of 50. So this is the knife we're going to talk about today. I uh, figured I'd do a video on it as I have yet to actually do one on this one. And uh, grab yourself a cup of coffee, grab a beer or whiskey or whatever you want to do, uh, or if you're like me, a sparkling club soda grapefruit. And uh, you know, while you're at it, grab your phone, check out bladezilla.ca. There we go. That's the knife right there in the middle for reference on the main page. The F95T Custom Division. I uh, got a bunch of denim overkill still, some new F3 emeralds, uh, some Igors, lots of cool stuff. All of it in Canada, ready to ship. I do ship down to the States as well. If you find something, just send me a note. Uh, the website is set up to ship already down to the States, and in a lot of cases, guys are getting stuff next day. So that is the little spiel of Bladezilla.ca. Check it out. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for this beautiful knife that you've probably seen now in about 25 or so different videos. Um, and this guy sits in a case right beside me and is probably why it ends up in so many videos. And, you know, full disclosure, this one was one of, uh, at the time, it was very hard for me to find this knife. And uh, since then, it's gotten a little easier because the demand I just I hasn't really been as high as some of the other ones. Um, but nonetheless, I still think it's fantastic. Uh, let's do some measurements here. We are coming in at eight and three quarters, I believe, depending on how squinty I am, technical term. Uh, eight and three quarters or a blade length of about four inches and maybe a little bit longer uh, tip to corner, but about four inches. F95, 95 millimeters is what that is supposed to be. And then handle is what, four and three quarters, something like that. Somewhere around there. So there we go. Um, and I've got lots of lots of knives to compare it with today, lots of things to talk about. Uh, but I guess let's, let's first start kind of going through a couple comparisons and we'll talk about it. Like I said, this is a cup of coffee. Uh, F95, CD, and L. And gangster old school knife you guys i've done a video on this one probably about a month or two ago uh a newer one to me I, this one's been in a couple the f5 silk slim all different versions of the same knife as we can kind of see um kind of some old school some new school some mid school uh lots going on with all of them really cool knife all custom division with the CD logo, and for guys that are new to Sheer Groff, Custom Division is their, um, I guess you'd say, production uh, custom knives. Um, highly, highly touted knives, and uh, limited quantities, limited availability. Um, most times there's only 50, or in some of the older ones, like say the Silk Slim, there's only 30. Um, but super cool knives. Um, these are, I think, the majority of the F. 95s that I have now. Um, we do make, or sorry, not we, they do make a carbon covered version on the front scale called the Hattie. Uh, this is a CCKS. You've seen this in a lot of other videos as well. Also, another video that I need to make. Um, but it is essentially, this is not a custom division, but it is essentially the same kind of ergonomics of that knife, but with a carbon front scale. Much like how they have the neon, which I will show you. Let me grab a neon. Uh, there we go. We have the neon is a smaller version of an F95, basically. Right? Flipper tab pulled back instead of built into the tip like the Quantums. They also make, let's put that down here, the Hation, which is a carbon version on the front scale, version of the neon. Also custom division. Also very hard to find. <laughs> But uh, that is for another day, and I'll also just check this guy's out, look at this clip. Isn't this nuts? This is, uh, this is a video that I'm going to do very soon. 
Uh, this is one of the coolest, uh, you know, as uh, my buddy Kevin says, uh, little boys, B-O-I. He likes the little ones. Knives, guys, come on. Have some class. Um, but yeah, they, they are very small, small boys, I think he refers to them. So um, he likes these, the, the mini Quantums. Um, some of the American knives, he loves those as well. So uh, he's all about the small knives. Anyway, we're going to have to digress there and uh, move along because it just got a little weird. So the F95 series, as we can see, we've got a couple different varieties here. They're all running on roller bearings. Now roller bearings being, um, look, can that just, can I just describe it with that and leave it at that? This has to be one of the best, oh, F5, that has to be one of the best actions. This one might even be better. Oh. I always come back to this one. Anyway, so they're all on roller bearings, um, and which will be indicated uh, right. Ooh, I know I was gonna say right in here, but is it? Is there even room in there anymore? I can't remember where they write it. it. Might be inside somewhere, or did they put it up there? Sorry, I've done zero homework today before this video. You know, and these are some of the hardest ones to actually talk about knives on because I haven't prepped for this. Um, but let's let's do a couple other quick comparisons here while I have the knife out. And then we're going to kind of go through it. We're going to talk sizes. So I did the F95. So let's grab a Stellar. Uh, let's grab this one. This is a Stellar Touch. I uh, just had some of these go through as well. Touch being Sinkovich design, so you get the Sinkovich bits on the hardware instead of the standard um, sheer broad bits. And then the more machine handle and a kind of a bronze anno. And then it'll look even smaller back there. Um, I showed you the neon, but I'm going to do a neon as well. Why not? Just for size comparison, there's the three. Um, Let's get this off here. Let's bust out the red carpet and take a look at the Astrum. Um, that video did very well and uh, is probably one of, if not my new favorite knife in the collection. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of people who are curious about the sizing on these because when I first saw the Astrum itself, I always thought it was uh, massive. That's what she said because it just looks like a big knife. And the reality is it actually has more of a carry factor to it, I'd say in hand. Like if we, if we really look, let me move this up here a little bit. If we, um, if we look at the actual profile, the ergonomics of it, it's more attuned to like a neon than an F95. Let's grab that neon one more time and just kind of look at the, uh, the ergonomics. Because when I first saw it, I'm like, man, this thing's huge, and it's, you know, a little too long, and how do they do it? But, like, the blade is a lot thinner, as we can see, or shorter in height. The handle's shorter. It's it's a nice fat knife. It's thick, but um, it's a, to me, it feels like a big neon, like a bigger, burlier neon. And remember, uh, frame lock versus kind of the liner lock, or apron lock, whatever you want to call it, versus frame lock again on the neon. But um, this has quickly become one of my favorites, if not the favorite in the collection. Not just because it's like ridiculously rare, but because of the detail involved. And I've done a video that was, it had to have been close to an hour on this video. So hit the, the playlist below and uh, that knife is, uh, it's got its own video. So I won't keep you from looking at that, but it has all the features that I like in terms of no name on the blade. No CD, logo, nothing there. Um, it's got the bear on the handle. It fits beautifully well. It's very pocketable with a massive blade and uh, the roller bearings and everything. So watch that video because uh, it's just such a cool knife. And I don't think there's too much information on this knife out there yet. Um, and if, you ha if you're watching this and you're like, hey, that's a great looking uh, Astrum. I've got the custom division because there's like at the time of filming this, there's like only a couple of those out there. And, you know, if you want to pass that my way, you let me know because I'd love to talk.
but there's the Sprint Run Astrum. Uh, for sizing, and then what else do we have for the F95? Uh, we could do the Kony, another uh, knife that I've done a video on, great knife. We've got the Dr. Death, another real cool one. I originally brought that knife in to flip and sell, and uh, it, it stuck because it's so cool. Like, they're just, you know, it's an older knife and very hard to find. And it came in and it's like new in box and I'm just like, yep, that's not going anywhere. There's a couple that they just make an impression on you that uh, you just can't move. And I've done a video on this one as well. So uh, don't be too worried if you don't get a ton of time with this today. But uh, I have done a video on this knife. Uh, or was it of a different one? I can't remember. Uh, we could do the another Sinkovich. There we go. That is the Bio Dark. And for in the, or no, sorry, that's the Bio Light. And then we've got the Bio Dark actually. It's friend right here. Same knife, different color. And as I, as I was pulling it out, I was like, man, that looks a little light for the dark. I should probably uh, not be uh, filming this without looking at the knives. But sometimes it's very difficult. Um, the RJ Martin, we'll pull that one out as well. Very similar kind of. Uh, blade finish to this one as well which is kind of cool it's got the kind of mirrored edge with the polished satin flats and you'll see that on the cd as well it's kind of got that little flat thing going on but another knife that i've got to find time to do a video on um and then i think that's going to be kind of it so i've done the stellars i've done the neons uh and then production wise yeah we're not going to go down the road of other, other brands i think that's plenty for today so what makes this knife so cool. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you this. When I first got into Shirogorov a few years back, I think the F95T production knife was what called me into the brand. I, I just I saw the handle material, the T being tortoise or uh, turtle. It just looks so cool. And since then, I've had I don't know how many F95T production knives go through the through my hands, through the site, um, tons of them. And you'd think I'd have one right here to be like, hey, let's compare the F95T CD Custom Division to a production. That'd be a great video. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't. I don't have a single one. I have reviewed the Blade Show Anno. I have reviewed the Blue Turtle, the Production Turtle. Um, and I've probably featured this exact knife as a comparison in all three videos. But I don't have one here. Um, they just, they come and they go so quickly sometimes. And uh, before you know it, a new hot knife like the Stellar, for example, the Stellar Production, they, they come in and they're gone within a day. Um, they're tough to kind of keep on the shelf. And those were another one of those knives. They're just so, so quick to go out the door. Um, the main difference here, if you're looking at this and asking, old Blazilla, what's the difference between an F95 Custom Division, F95T Custom Division, and a production. Well, it uh, it all begins and ends on the attention to detail. There's much more on this. The micro milling on the shell portion, the spots, it's, uh, I would say, probably twice as uh, refined. You still get the captive pivot system, which is terrific. So the captive pivot system under here as well is uh, a little ball bearing underneath this as a cap. And it prevents this cover, and that's all it is, it's just a cover from spinning. Okay? On the flip side, you'll see um, that you still have the shear gore off tool that can be used. And on a knife like this, buy the tool. Uh, it's not going to be an issue for you. If you can afford this knife, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks, get the right tool, get the bits, uh, etc., because it's plenty worth it. Now, the one thing that this, uh, they did. You know, they obviously did the additional milling to kind of make it a little more fine, which is awesome. But they kept kind of this stone wash on here. And that's all found all over the knife, um, which I like. I like stone wash because it hides imperfections really well. And you're probably looking at this knife going, oh man, there might be some rough spots. No, that is the stone wash. This knife has never been used, never been carried. 
it is uh, is as new as it gets. But if you did decide to carry it or use it, it would really hide any imperfections really well. So to me, the 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 F ninety five T C D really hides kind of the or, or I shouldn't say hides. It gives you a balance, a really cool balance of like like elegance and refinement in the, the fine milling and, and angles and whatnot. But then they add that kind of almost like a polished stone wash kind of vibe to it and it just breaks it up really nicely. Really well done. Now the other thing, okay? Obviously the detail level is through the roof and you know just just look at it. You should be able to see how sharp all the edge edge work and angling and milling, how the hardware is beautifully done. The backspacer which I believe is Zerk I think it's a 3D machine Zerk backspacer, which looks terrific. And and same with actually the the uh, the pivot um, pivot cover there. And usually what they do is they they color match this, the backspacer and the clip. But in this case, they just did this and this backspacer and the pivot collar, which looks great. The jimping, as you can see, let me move this up here. Really nicely done, really manageable. The, uh, you know, it, it, it rockets out as well. If we look at how forward it is from center, it's pretty medium. So it comes out nice and smooth, no issues. The, uh, the pattern that's milled into the magnesium, or sorry, not magnesium, my God, come on, man. Uh, the zirconium backspacer, that same pattern is also found up on the blade. Nice spaced out, which looks terrific. You know, it, it's definitely practical, but it's also very, uh, it's not very aggressive. So when you use it, it's not going to cut into your finger. You could certainly use it if you wanted to. That profile carries down the blade, it's rounded over, and then it expands at the tip to kind of provide a little bit of support to the blade. As I mentioned earlier, we've got some kind of polished or some satin flats, which looks really good. And then the custom division logo on the end, right in the cutting path, and then a nice little mirrored kind of cutting edge, which is beautifully done. And for anyone, this uh, this knife's on the site right now, so if anyone wants to look at that and uh, see what this particular one looks like, uh, depending on when this knife sells, because it will at some point here, but uh, and depending on when I put this up, I don't know if it's going to even matter, but um, I always try to take all, like, I, I always angle the, the light right on the blade so you can see anything short of a perfect mirror, but um, anyway. Now, as well, we've got this little tip that's kind of reduced down on the end here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the neon, um, which I'm going to put down. Do I have that neon? Where is that? The F95-0. This is a modified one. Uh, I think Walter Randolph did that, but they have that little tip that comes down on the end. Try to put them side by side so you can see. I don't know if it's gonna mess the focus up. Maybe let's do this. Duh. That's kind of cool. It's like little brother, big brother. That's cool. It's a nice little feature. I like the uh, I like the ergonomics of it. The clip itself. I'm gonna put that blade away. The clip itself is uh, it's angled onto the frame versus the frame lock or the lock bar. So hopefully you can see that, but uh, the, the clip isn't symmetrical in that the, I guess the duck bill or whatever is only on one side and it's leaning right onto the frame. So when you hold this in your hand and you put pressure on it, you're transferring all your, your weight onto the frame instead of the lock bar. So that, uh, that M398 blade um, doesn't get caught when you're putting it out. And it, it's on all the sheer gloves, it's very sensitive to that. So to give you an idea, I'm gonna just, Put a little pressure on the lock bar with my middle finger and it will not come out but if I take that same pressure I move it to the clip like it's super super easy to come out so it's a nice little design of the clip which is awesome we can see here obviously I said it has M398 blade which is you know essentially just a different vendor but very similar to S90V very very good tough steel good edge retention just a solid product 
Fun fact, S90V, I've heard, is Sergei's favorite steel um, to work with. So I don't know how M398 varies, but uh, nonetheless, nice little fun fact on Shirogorovs. I always like hearing that kind of stuff. Um, Lock-up-wise on this particular knife, should be pretty light, like all the Shiros. They all tend to be very light on the lock-up. And it's because of the ergonomics of things, and there's actually quite a firm amount of uh, tension there, but it just gives you the impression it's very light. We've got a metal lock bar insert as well, which is now accessible from the inside, and a metal over-travel stop, which I'm seeing kind of poke out here. Now an over-travel stop, if uh, for my new sheer grow off aficionados or just knife enthusiasts, it's to prevent the lock bar from going off this direction to the left. Uh, because remember when you're setting this lock bar they are over bending it to provide some tension, right? Uh, and every time you push it the other way and bend it back it takes away from that tension. Now the only difference here, there's a couple things actually which I'll kind of talk about next here. So besides uh, besides the obvious, I want to point out a couple things here uh, between the F5s and uh, does this one have it as well? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's. Uh, you know what? This one doesn't make any difference. Um, so a couple things. So when we're talking about that metal lock bar insert, right? Just talking about it earlier, how it's now on the inside. The old ones didn't come that way. They came external. And you can kind of see here. This does. This is the F5 Silk Slim. It has the uh, the metal lock bar insert, obviously, or the uh, over travel stop, just kind of poking out. You can see it like a like a a root of a tooth. But the screw for this is on the outside. And I always thought this looked almost like it didn't belong. Like it's just poking up just a little bit more than I think it should. And trust me, this is not modified. This is perfectly normal. They're all identical to this. But it always bothered me. Doesn't it just look a little silly? And if we take that one step further, and we look at the other guy here, you can see uh, this is the F95 NLCD. Now it's kind of countersunk, which is nice. But uh, it's still on the outside which is just a little bit of an eyesore. Um, one more difference that I'll point out here after I, I'll, I'll kind of come back to this, but so essentially what they do, they put it inside, which is now beautiful because there's no nothing popping up. It does look, um, I guess, more sleek, more like it's meant to be that way. But in terms of adjusting it, now you have to take it apart, which you would probably have to do anyway. Um, so there's that. Okay, we're gonna get the NL back. Well, let's grab the silk. Now, for my eagle eye aficionados, is there anything else here that we can spot as a as a pretty substantial difference between an old F95, which is the F5, or the turtle? I'll give you a hint. Take a look at the lock bar. Okay, so if we look at the lock bar, we can see the uh, the bend on this is external. And also, my god, the micro-milling. Oh, okay, focus. If we look at the F5 Silk Slim, the lock bar is internal. Look, it's rotated the other way. I don't know the advantages to either, uh, either way. I do know this is obviously an older knife. I don't know the exact age. Um, in my head, I thought 2017-ish, 2018. But since... Uh, doing a lot of the old knives with this type of bend in the lock bar, or the cutout, I guess you'd say. Come on, focus, dude. Uh, the cutout in the lock bar being internal like this, a lot of them are starting to go this way. And I think they've done that on just about everything. Other than, I guess, now they're doing the apron lock on everything. So, that's one core difference. Which I think, you know, action-wise, I will say this is smoother. It's also much older and broken in, whereas this one's not really broken in, still. Like, just silk smooth, pun intended. But ergonomically, it's a great knife, right? And the money on this one, like, it's just, it's in the milling. It's very Astrum Sprint Run-esque. And then around the clip as well, like, you kidding me? 
This is just nuts. I will do a video on this knife because uh, it's going to probably become my new F95 uh, case in point knife because I just I, I really love the F95. Okay, uh, so beyond that, we obviously have the the lock bar insert, which uh, is now internally attached. Uh, the other thing I like when I roll this knife, I often show this. Look at how the lock bar pokes itself up, okay? And significantly pokes itself up compared to other models. It uh, it stands up like crazy. And that makes it so when you go to unlock it, it's just so accessible, so ergonomic, so natural feeling. It's uh, It just makes so much sense. If you're a lefty, it probably sucks. But if you're a lefty, you're probably used to it by now in everyone's knife. And you're probably like, hey, this... Raised lock bar, it feels unbelievable and incredible compared to everything else. The other thing, guys, I can't even get my camera to focus on this. There's micro milling all over that place. It's insane. Like, so fine, you can't, like, you can only really see it up close. So I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it is in 4K, so maybe it does. The other thing, too, when looking at this knife, even the micro milling on the, uh, the turtle, turtle shell portion of this knife, it's so fine the camera's gonna look at it and go yeah okay it looks good it, it looks tight um, in person it's ridiculously tight the milling work that's what he said um, alternately as well you can see the pattern as well on the lock bar it's it's matching both sides which is a nice detail the thing that does not match at all and I can't see how it is supposed to match is the pocket clip why go through the, the pattern matching on here? Um, I think there's another one under the clip on this side. I think, I can't really tell, but I thought this one might line up. And then this just is kind of in no man's land. I think that kind of looks a little silly. But the milling on the clip match the high-end knives, which um, I don't know if I have an F95 with that spec on the clip. The Hattie has the same type of clip. So if I take... Here's a, a blue hattie, right? Flip it over and show you the clip. You can kind of see the design layout on the milling on the clip. Beautifully well done. Also the cutout on the external, all milled in here as well. Beautiful knife. I just want to show you one more time on a different hattie, which is the same one, just different color, but sometimes the camera does weird things. There you go. That's the CCKS 21, 2021, I think, 2022, something like that. Um, okay, so we've, we've gone over the milling externally. Beautiful. Work of art. We've got the CD logo. Got a nice cutout on it. Awesome. All this stuff. If I were to open this thing up and show you the inside of this knife, your mind would be blown. Because it's a work of art. And it's, you don't have to do any of this stuff to sell a knife to me. But on the inside, it's all skeletonized, big milling two, three step down pockets. It's just nuts. Okay. And you can see the to the tolerances. Hopefully you can get a little gap in the back that's floating in the back space here. But inside, oh God, I say this in every video and it's so hard. I, I, this is such a tiny little space for a camera to try to look inside. And I'm so sorry that I can't do a better job of this. The camera freaks out. Anything macro is just not uh, not an ideal setup. But inside is beautifully, beautifully milled out and looks absolutely incredible. Just so well done. Underneath the back spacer here as well. Uh, hopefully the light can hit that just the right way. But if we're looking under the back spacer, we can actually see another little detail, CD. 22, I'm trying to read it, what is it, 2022, 03, I think. I'm trying to look through the camera lens while doing all this, so it's, you know what, sorry. But yeah, it's labeled, it's numbered right then and there, so you can see your exact serial number for those wanting to look at the knife, um, or to track this knife as it kind of moves around. Number two, which is awesome, single digit, custom division. I know it sounds silly, but number two is always cool. Always cool. 
Um, on the back spacer as well, I know we looked at it a little bit earlier, but let's look at it again. We've got a spot for a lanyard. And for, uh, you know, Bladezilla aficionados, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about this because I do bring this up on the Stellar. Uh, from the side profile of the Stellar, you always get that big hole um, for the lanyard, which is fine. You know, some people say... I don't like it. Others will say I could care less. I'm kind of of the I could care less camp, but it's always worth noting that on some designs the lanyard hole makes it look a little bit see-through. The F95T CD, they get around that by building it into the backspacer. So you get this nice little pocket in there if you want to utilize a lanyard or some cord or some leather or uh, a rock climbing carabiner and ruin the knife, then you certainly can do that. Please don't do the, what I just said though. But from the side profile, it still looks awesome. It still has the F95 ergonomic look that's timeless, absolutely timeless. And for anyone who doesn't know this, this is Shira Goroff's Sabenza. This is their 10, 12 year design now. I think it's 11 years. This is their, their original knife. This is their, their go-to. They sell the most F95s, is my understanding. Which is kind of surprising. I would have thought it'd be like, even Quantums, they must sell a ton of Quantums now. Because all the special editions are Quantums lately. Um, like all the Ursus models. They don't do a whole lot of F95 production knives. They're all Quantums and Quantiums. And anyway, maybe that's just lately. But um, I digress. It looks phenomenal. That's all I'm getting at. It's their classic configuration. The, the flipper tab is above the pivot with a nice little pocket for your finger, which I will show compared to a Quantum, which I always like to do. Right? Quantum, the flipper tab's built into the tip. But noting the correlation of where it is in, in relation to the actual tab, that's the important thing. The further you bring this guy back from the pivot, the more you're going to have to push it out. Think of it as going into a bigger gear on your bicycle on the back, a bigger cog. The more forward you bring it up, the more it's like a smaller gear where it will hammer out. So if I take a knife like my Tom Mayo, Dr. Death, look how far back the, the flick, uh, flipper tab is. It's right behind the pivot. So this one, you've got to give it some juice to get it out, and it feels slow. That's an inherent part of the design. That's what they want to do. But it's back, right? So when you're kind of in the middle, center-ish on the pivot, it's just a nice, consistent place to kind of launch out. The more you bring it forward, the more it hammers out, like some of the RJ Martins. Real nice. Now, I've done a video on this knife comparing it to an F95CDNL, the new one with the blue inlay of the Vanex with the new pivot. Same kind of thing. Uh, I've compared this knife with the Magnetic, which is a custom division Hattie, uh, which had a really cool back. I've done a video on that one. Um, there, those three knives are all the same size, dimensionally. And when I say dimensionally, I mean when, when I look at this, you can see how it's got this squished in spot here. Uh, everything's the same width. The blade, the handle, everything fits other than the new one, the Vanex one. It's kind of got a little bit of a concave to the inlay, which is super sick. And obviously there's some differences in the pivot and, and whatnot. It's a more expensive knife, but um, size-wise it's the same. And it just seems like lately everyone's going for how can we get a knife thinner and thinner and thinner until we're basically putting a piece of saran wrap on top of a fixed blade, honestly. I, uh, I like the old school ones. I like the, the thicker handle, you know. I would love to track down an F7. That'd be sick. Uh, or some of the old Quantums, the just big, thick, burly. That's, that's a design, man. But everyone wants bigger blade. They want a 4-inch blade in the, the place of a 3.5-inch EDC, right? And that's what this knife is. It's shockingly big. I'm not saying it. Shockingly big blade swing on a very thin, very carryable design, which is why I've had this one in the uh, the case now for quite a while. It's just so good. We've got the Shiragoroff bear on the back, and that's that's etched right in there. 
and I've taken a couple pictures of that on Instagram and whatnot, so um, that's pretty cool. And you should get a good angle of the stone wash on the flats. Looks cool. Super, super cool. In hand, it fits It fits really nice. It's an F95, man. It fits really nice. No issues, no hot spots. Everything's rounded. It's a usable backspacer on the inside of your palm. Jimping's excellent. Obviously, I talked earlier about the ergonomics of the uh, lock bar. Fantastic. No issues there. And then, in terms of weight, I will weigh this, but it's got to be around... Because I remember the... I remember weighing the NL was lighter than this. So I think this was like 4 ounces, maybe 4.1. Does that sound right, guys? So let's grab... Uh, let's grab this. There we go. Nice piece of cloth. I don't like the metal touching. I'm okay with wood, but not metal. Okay, so grams, 120, 1, and 4.3. So what was I saying? 4 ounces? 4.3, and I think the NL was like 3.9 or something. It was quite a bit lighter, which was surprising considering it was the same size, but then again, when you put an inlay on something and you hollow the handle out and slap it on top, you're going to be, uh, you're getting rid of a lot of titanium, which even though is a very tough, lightweight material, it, uh, it weighs more than, you know, a little piece of inlay. Um, so let's just take a, let's just do a quick overview here. So I've done, I've talked about the blade. I've talked about the uh, mirror, the design of it, the jimping, M398, which I believe is written... I don't know, it's written on the blade itself, but I thought there was another spot. Am I crazy? Or am I just thinking mini quantum? I'm thinking mini quantum. So it's written on the it's written on the side there. In hand, really nice. No no notch here on the handle where your fingers kind of split, depending on gloves. So that's really that's a nice little touch. Um, Backspacer is obviously made of um, zerk, so it's got some weight to it. Really really nice. 3D milled, so you get all kinds of design down there, and, and the closer I bring this in, you should be able to see little notches in it as well, which is often not shown in a lot of pictures. Uh, so the more close you get to this guy, the more you'll realize there's just so much detail. The tolerances are incredible, like take for example this flipper tab moving through the handle. Watch this. Watch this gap right here. Like, are you kidding me? Look at this. It is so close to touching, but it's not. Like, that's just incredible. Tolerances are crazy. Um, underneath, I guess I didn't talk about this. Obviously, perfectly dead center, which I'll flip the other way to show. Um, which is great because it's a frame lock. Underneath, I can't recall if we had any milling underneath the backspacer for centering. There is some on the inside, which is kind of hard to show, but there is some center lines. Uh, it's pinned in from a few spots. It's floating a little bit. The tolerances are tight. Skeletonized like crazy. Beautifully milled pocket clip. Metal lock bar insert with a screw that's reversed. Um, external bend on the lock bar itself. Captive pivot system. Don't use a screwdriver on it because it's way too expensive and beautiful. And please don't do that to yourself. Um, otherwise, beautiful knife. Absolutely beautiful knife, and you know that's a money shot right there. You get the CD, you get the micro milled turtle. That's just an absolute gorgeous knife, and uh, somebody's going to be really happy with this one because it's sat on my sat in uh, wrapped in a towel or a little silk, <laughs> a little uh, thing right beside me now for almost what a year or so, being compared to a number of knives on the channel. And I figured it was time to uh, to put something together on this because I've had this to compare to for so many different knives, and yet um, I just haven't had a had its own video. So pretty cool, really cool knife. I uh, I'm glad that I was able to track this one down and uh, compare it with so many cool knives. But uh, anyway, may as well show you guys. Um, I'm probably going to pull this particular video ahead. I've got some cool stuff coming in the next few weeks here. Um, geez, lots of stuff happening, some, some more limited stuff on the way. Uh, I'm really excited 
And uh, as, as always, guys, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on, on YouTube if you're watching this. I'm sure you are, but you never know. Um, TikTok, whatever it takes. Send me a note. Check out the site, bladezilla.ca. And uh, more than anything, just message. If you want to talk blades, talk knives, talk shiros, let me know. Another thing, if there's any brands that you want featured on the channel or in the store and you're having trouble tracking them down in Canada and they are completely legal knives, please let me know because I'm always looking to add stuff to the store. But more than anything, I'm always trying to check out some new knives. Um, right now, I'm, I'm taking a look at um, Kurt Merican's and would love to get that brand in the store, uh, take a look at some of that stuff. But it's, it's tough when you're a little guy like me to have an impact on talking to these big guys. So it's, uh, if you're somebody out there that can lend a hand with that, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, uh, you know, let's just keep trucking along. Okay, well, thanks for checking out the F95T CD. And as always, guys, we will catch you later. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Cheers. Peace.